Good morning, and I hope you'll uh, enjoy the show. I have with me Diane Lamp here. Uh, she's on in the legislature, and she's on the budget committee, uh, so, so appropriations. And uh, she's going to talk to us about some new things that we're doing. Right? <laughs> yes, Betty. <laughs> well, thank you for inviting me, uh, Representative well, Noble. Thank you for coming. It's great to see you. Yeah. I know people may not know this, but we are, have adjacent seats on the floor. Yeah. For the last eight years, we've sat next to each other. Yeah. You're uh, 84 and I'm 85. And, uh, I'll be between us. <laughs> yes. Uh, we've had many a conversation uh, scrunched down in that aisle between us. And uh, <laughs> I have benefited greatly from your wisdom and your knowledge oh. from that building. <laughs> thank and you. And it is a pleasure. Um, so thank you for letting me come in and, and chat. You know I'm such a talker to begin with anyway. But uh, That's I, good. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I have something of value <clears throat> for your viewers to learn. And, and in preparing for today, I was trying to think about, well, you know, what, what would people want to know about the budget processing? There's a lot of numbers, and this is true, and the money is extremely important, and how we use that money uh, on behalf of Vermont taxpayers and providing those services has, um, has changed. I mean, not only have we, have we dealt with some pretty difficult budget years with getting, getting it just right and getting it balanced, but in the process, Betty, I'm very excited about... There is a new process. There is not There is a new approach, yes. Approach. Yeah. And it's... Some people love it. Some people are not as comfortable with it. And I'm still learning, too. And so as we uh, take a new approach, this is something that the state employees and at the program level and the executive branch and the legislature and all of us are trying to change the way we think. <laughs> and that, oh. that is not an easy task. And so let me, let me just start like taking a look at back of the history. Okay, like how did we get to this point? Um, you know, historically in, in budgets, you know, even 10, 10 15 years ago, um, you would, if you came in with a program and maybe you had a really good, you know, program that provided services for the homeless or you um, provided services to help farms in, in ag education. You know, you did good work in the state. So you would come in and your budget maybe last year was X dollars and you would say, you would say, well, what, what should be my budget this year would be last year's plus inflation would be an adjusted, probably a reasonable approach to take to saying my budget should increase by the the inflation but um that doesn't work anymore well we're not and we started asking the questions because people would come in and say well here's my budget this is what i did last year i served this many people doing x or i provided this much and and they have a right to be as we very proud of that yeah but what we were maybe missing the boat a little bit on is saying, well, how well did you do it? <laughs> Not how much only did you do, but how well did you do it? And then the other question, which I know you're familiar with, is, yeah. is anyone better off? Yeah, anyone better off. That's a very important part. Yeah. So how are we measuring what we're doing? And it baffled people at first. It's, yes. you know, they felt maybe a little bit isolated or singled out, which we don't want to have that. It's sort of a new way of structure looking at how are we using the taxpayer's money and being accountable for it. And um, that brings us into that new approach started, you, you recall years ago, the Government Accountability Committee. Mm -hmm. We have some senators, yeah. we have some House members looking at how does our government improve the way that we're accountable to our taxpayers for yeah. the dollars and for the services. And for the help. Uh, and and help. are we getting it yeah. right? Yeah. So, all right. So they started off at, um, looking at it, and I know you've heard, and people may have heard, so I'm hoping this catches on. You'll hear RBA, 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 Results-Based Accountability. Results-Based account Accountability. Correct. So that when you say, I want a million dollars for my nonprofit, you have to say, what happened? How are the people? Who, who did you help and how did you help them? And what, 
Well, well, the wording may be a little bit but more the, complicated, but uh, you know, did but you've you got really it right. help? It's the goal that's important. It's the important. goal to help the people. Did to, we get it right? Did we get? So um, we've started asking ourselves these questions and and sort of percolating that into committee work. So at the same time this is going on, and if you recall, last year we have a new chair of appropriations, yes, Mitzi Johnson, who's also a breath of fresh air and is approaching our budgeting as really inclusive of all the committees. In the past, whether rightly or wrongly, they may have policy committees may have felt out of, uh, uh, out of the process. Okay. So we're also looking toward the policy committee to inform and make decisions around their, the budgets within their own programs. So if, if I'm on... Uh judiciary, then one of the programs would be the, the judicial, whole judicial thing. How yes. is it working? Is it serving the people? Is it timely? Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. What are the goals? What do we want to, how, where we are in Vermont and what do we want to accomplish? So through that process, now in 2014, yeah. and I remember this floor debate with you, we passed uh, a bill, Act 186, in 2014, and that bill um, actually expanded the the programmatic, if I get that right, programmatic performance measures for budget pilot Those programs. Those big words. <laughs> oh, I, I actually made notes so I could make sure that I got it just right. Okay, so we started a pilot. We couldn't expect everybody in state government to change overnight. Not really possible or doable, but we said, all right, we're going to start. And take a bite of this apple one time. One, uh, so in 2015 budget, we had 13 programs across 11 departments start off by reporting from performance measures, okay, in within the governor's budget. To see how well To they start answering the questions. With, and, for the yes, people. Yes, to start to report back to the legislature and to the governor s some of these measures, okay. Measures then are created by um, the legislature body. We set the population outcomes. We say, this is what we want to do, and I'll get to those in a minute. We set that, that level. And then the program level, they set the indicators of how they're going to achieve there and how they're going to hold themselves accountable to getting to that population outcome that the legislature, which is the people, have saying they want. Okay. So now, this last year, we've gone from 13 to, let me see my notes here, 41 programs across 31 departments are now working their budgets and approaching their life in this manner. So we have, I don't know if we even know, do you know Suzanne Zeller? We know her by nope. name. No. Nope. Okay. But in that bill, we created, we have a state chief performance officer. That oh. is her title within the executive branch. And her name is Susan Zeller, and she's terrific. And she has some um, what they call PALs, which are performance accountability liaisons to departments. Because we can't just expect state government and, and, and all of across the state to just, we just say, oh, will you do this without giving them the help to walk through and make the changes necessary. All right. So we did that in 2014. And also within that bill where I talked just about, the population level outcomes. Mm -hmm. All right, we passed then eight. We said all of Vermont, very high level, and I'll go run them down briefly if you don't mind. Okay. That's Number one, of. Vermont has has a prosperous economy. It's kind of a. I think that, that's we can we, all that, agree that's upon. It. That's want, number yeah, one. Yeah. Vermont. That's our one of our goals. Vermont goals. has a prosperous economy. Population level outcomes. Vermonters are healthy. Three. We're one of the healthiest states in the country. We are, so that's that's a good one. But yeah. we're asking, our, you know, keep, we that we want to keep them that way, yeah. right? And Vermont's uh, environment is clean and sustainable. Four, Vermont's communities are safe and supportive. Five, Vermont families are safe, nurtured, stable, and supported. Six, Vermont's children and young achieve their potential. And there's a there's a there's yeah. a lot of things underneath oh, these, oh, yeah. but yes, this is yes. the high level. Seven Vermont elders and people with disabilities 
and people with mental conditions live with dignity and independent in an independent setting of their choice. And number eight, Vermont has open, effective, and inclusive government with a supported, motivated, and accountable state workforce. That was our original eight, but this is a living, changing, and ever-evolving document uh, and uh, outcomes. Mm -hmm. So it was discovered in the last that people brought to the attention or people who were working on it said, you know, you're missing something. You know, you don't have anything in there on infrastructure. Well, so there's a proposal now. Uh, number nine is a new uh, uh, population level outcome of Vermont state infrastructure meets the needs of Vermonters in the economy and the environment. And that isn't just your roads and bridges, Betty. It's also, what are we doing on our broadband? How are we doing within our infrastructure in the general? The roads is the uh, Mm -hmm. yeah. So there we are with those, and it's interesting that you mentioned judiciary because conversations in just the last week have said, you know, the judicial committee's like, well, where's, where are we in this? How do, where's our committee's work in this? And we were thinking, it, or some people were thinking that it would be underneath the, um, you know, keeping uh, Vermonters' community safe and supportive, but you know, they've added a new thought, which we'll have to consider, is what Vermonters access to justice. Yeah. We should measure this. That's very slow. Uh, well, yes, but it's an important indicator. If yes. we're trying to set, oh, up, yes. set up, if we, if we had all of these things, this would be the Vermont we'd want to live in. This is the kind of Vermont we want to live in. So those are the population outcomes. But the, uh, the mm -hmm. Constitution says we have to have justice, you know, yes. right away or soon. Uh, and uh, we're not doing that because they don't have enough ju judges, they don't have enough money, and they can't handle all the cases that quickly. Yeah, we're hearing that, especially right now in the, in the uh, uh, termination of parents' rights and, and discussions around children and, and, and the child protection issues in the state, which are all really uh, uh, stemming from our addiction issue. Yeah. But, which is what brings me to what, so there's, this is a, this is continuously being improved and, and modified, and so we have to ask ourselves, the, all of us, and this is where it gets tough for all of us to change the way we think, legislators, executive branch. Um, we have to ask the questions of those, uh, uh, the population outcomes have about 80 indicators, and I wanted to mention, <laughs> yes, <laughs> so underneath, <laughs> underneath each one of them has a lot of, if people are familiar with, any kind of uh, school-based goals and objectives and indicators. This is what we're, we're 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 getting at. So there's a website, Betty. I I I know that you know about it, but I want to make sure that your viewers do. And I think they're going to post it at the end of this show. Um, where so get your pencils and papers yes. ready so you can write it down when it comes at the end of the show. So, yes, it's spotlight.vermont.gov. As if people go. And so spotlight. If we put a spotlight on Vermont and we put a spotlight on these particular um, population level outcomes and you can go to that website and those nine indicators that I talked or the, and I shouldn't say you used the wrong term there. The nine uh, population level outcomes. There's a little icon for each and you can click on uh, health health and then you can go to all the indicators and the narratives and there are graphs and the measurements that are updated constantly so Vermonters can see what's going on and now we have to train ourselves as legislators uh. on how do we how do we move our budget uh -huh. to align with these goals yeah uh, so h how do we get to the goals Right, so and we can get the budget. <laughs> right, so in committees, this is where it's changing and yeah. evolving. Right now, the House right now is doing a lot of work on this. I'm not sure how much time I have on this, but um, I, I talk a little bit about what's happening in the House committees right now are working with uh, members from the Government Accountability Committee, and they're looking at their population indicators and asking particular questions, especially Betty, if you get a bill in your committee, uh, we're asking policy committees if they could um, take a look at it from asking a few questions like, is it solving a real problem? 
Is it enhancing the bill that you're looking at? Is it enhancing or improving any of the indicators that are already mm -hmm. out there? And how does it help us better achieve those outcomes for Vermonters? And um, then we'll start to move that into mm -hmm. the, the budget. I just want to make it clear that a bill is not a money bill. You know, pay right. something. A bill is oh. a, a piece, uh, uh, an issue that's put in, I want to do this. Yes. A proposed a, idea. A proposed idea, yeah. I propose that we do X. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then we then we And they call that it. a bill. Mm -hmm. And then, then that bill goes through the committees and then a vote on the House floor. Opening the conversation. Yeah. Opens the conversation. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. Any other? Co okay, oh, great. Yeah. So, so this brings us back to the performance measures are established by the departments, and we are asking them again. How well did you do? How much have you done? And is anyone better off? It's really hard for people sometimes to get the data. So in order to answer these questions correctly or to be able to give it its best chance, there's, um, it really requires a great deal of accurate data. And so sometimes within the functioning of state government, you know you've heard that we, we have some pretty archaic uh, systems out there and, and we can't expect somebody to be held to a standard if they can't even get the measurements. So we have to build up our reliability on data, but we're also saying you, can, you shouldn't have to wait for everything to be perfect. You can start to work on these things now. Yeah. There's um, uh, uh, an opportunity for people to actually think about every job that we do, including our own processed with bills is to say, you know, can we do this better? Can we do it faster? Is there a way to, we should question the process and uh, how we get there and not always just say, well, we've been doing that a hundred years and that's how it's done. Yeah. <laughs> and there might be some truth to that and there may be some law, but we should be challenging ourselves to saying, why are we doing it that way? Can it be done a different way? Yeah, they can. <laughs> and, and this goes to probably an example of probably one of the more exciting things that happen. And that's where when you want to ask yourself those questions or put your department who's processing a lot of things, whether it's permitting or different process, um, they had come at one time and asked they needed two more people because they couldn't keep up with the workload. You know, mm -hmm. please, we, we, even if we had two more people, it would take us five years to catch up. So, um, and this is in the Department of DEC, Department of Environmental Conservation, and they weren't at first all enamored with this process, but after a while, they tried it, and it resulted in some amazing things. It takes a little time, and it takes oh, yeah. effort yeah. to sit down, and what they did is on the board, take, takes, um, whether it's a permit or something that's coming in, and they post it every step that that activity had to go through in order for it to be finished and then question at every step is that needed does it bring value do we really have to do that anymore yeah, yeah. and then try to condense it or justify it and they discovered in that process things that they thought they had to do by this here not necessarily so when you dig into it and it collapsed the uh -huh. system to the point where it brought relief for that whole situation and they didn't need two more people and as a matter of fact it freed up other people within the department to be able to work on other problems that haven't um, had time or the uh, staff to address. So well, there's yeah. one really good example of a process to go through and that's called what we call lean. It's, it's, a, it's taking a look at and asking is there value in the step yeah. Well, it's just like, uh, say you have that seven steps for the permit, or nine, did you say? It was seven or nine? Oh, it's quite a few. Yeah. yeah. So let's say it's seven. And why do you need all seven? I mean, why couldn't you cut out number three and number five or something right. like that? And it's asking the question, yeah. can they be? Maybe they can't. Maybe it's federal law. I yeah. found out for a few things that we thought we were complying and working hard to comply with for a particular law wasn't the case anymore. It was... A little bit squishier than just being a law. Mm -hmm. um, 
So we are transforming. We've been doing it for four years now. We'll continue to do it. And I think I'll bring you to the, the end, Betty. And I know that we sat on the floor and for the first time ever in the state of Vermont, the budget bill came to the floor with intent language. The what floor being the whole, the, the, the whole, correct, whole legislature. And with intent language that said that we are now operating from, from our place on five uh, goals, and that is to reduce the overall dependence on one-time money, uh, create an ongoing expectation that, uh, that any asks new programs will come not just with that one year's number, but analyze what it's going to do to our budget for the next five years. So what you mean by that is uh, sometimes the federal government will say to us, uh, here, we'll give you this, start this program. Right. We'll give you this much money for next year. Right. And then we end up on the second year, where's the money coming from? That? Where's the money coming from? We yeah. started the program, and it was good, and oops, now we're three years out, so maybe we better ask ourselves at the very beginning, do we want to go down that road? What is that road looking like mm -hmm. in five years? So we've made that now a part of law that they are to come in with multi-year analysis on what they're asking for. And we want to move away from budgeting to that forecasted number. You know, we balance our checkbook to that all the money that, that we have coming in. Let's see if we don't budget to the 100% of forecast. Let's budget to 98%. Maybe we can get to the point where we're budgeting to 97 and giving ourselves some cushion to deal with unexpected things that arise mm -hmm. within the year that we don't have to come back or go to cut something else in order uh, to adjust. Uh, on that is, is we have a, the joint fiscal office Yes. and they make a decision that this much money is going to come in. They were wrong by 30 million one year. I don't know how much the second year and I don't know how much this year. But I, I talked to him, actually, and yes. I said, look, you can't do this to us anymore. You, if, he said, but we have all these people doing, you know, they're all, I said, well, they're doing it wrong, because if you're coming up with a 60, $30 million fault because not enough money came in, you, right. you're, you're predicting it in the wrong right. way. Right. The forecast comes out this Tuesday, uh -huh. tomorrow, 11 o'clock. For, for, for 17? For uh, where we are. Oh, well, we are. We, it basically, for me, it's like readjusting, balancing your checkbook. Well, now they better do it because we didn't get the snow money. So and there's all. a lot of factors, and yeah. you're right. It's a lot of money to be off. But when you ask those, you know, when you've got a $5 billion and you're, it's sometimes they're off by 1%, but that 1% is a very big number. Times. Yes. But, yes. But, they're, but the overall package, they're, they're, they're typically very, very close if you look at the big, the big picture. So the other two things I just wanted to make sure I mentioned is that we were thinking about moving to a two-year budget presentation. Instead of this one-year cycle, what does a two-year budget? You see the capital bill uh -huh, does yes. this. Mm -hmm. and, okay. and, and how would that create a better, stable, uh, reliable source over longer? And then we would have a bigger budget adjustment that's coming up. And, um, and then, of course, in here we extend the, uh, uh, the inclusion of those key uh, population level outcomes and the goals and starting to really hone our language in to mm -hmm. talking about that. Well, then, but these things do take time. So yes. uh, uh, you, you can't have a whole agency or a department even discussing this and coming out with it in one year. Sometimes they can come out with a piece of it. Yes. You know, we don't need this permit right. anymore or this particular right. question in the permit. Um, but then it might take two years or three years to really get going and get the information. So and how this, are you handling that well, when they're is, not doing all of that? This is where Susan Zeller comes in, our chief. She's now, there's a, that's a staff person in the executive branch who uh, her title is the chief performance officer. So she is in charge of making sure and rolling out and working with departments and helping them get to this uh, new thinking. So, in, in fact, though they're doing the thinking and they're doing, getting, trying to work it out, it can't, some places can't, I mean, like we can't solve that judge's problem in one year. No. Uh, no. With, with not, uh, not enough money no. and not enough. But um, we are working on, on uh, uh, 
car is getting. Oh, the suspended license? Yeah, that just left my mind. I oh, said, I think it's DLS. Here, get it back. <laughs> suspended license. <laughs> So, Betty, I'm the same way. I can remember numbers far better than I can remember names. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that would help if we can get yeah. the Judicial Bureau and the courts not to have to do so many suspended budgets. So right. if, if I go through a red light, I get a suspended license. I got to get to work. I got to feed right. my family. I'm the, I'm the man of the place. That's what right. people think. Well, so he goes and drives the car the next day. He's got a second suspended license. And he's got a third suspended license. Finally, right. you know. It's a downward spiral yeah. that so I think that we pile we, on Vermonters. We, that's just one thing that we will be working for in the judicial. Mm -hmm. Next next year we could work on a different spectrum of, of the court system. So, uh, we have about three or four minutes left, so is there anything um, you want to talk about today? Uh, this year's, we're doing the um, a but you're doing a budget that's going to come out soon. Yes, the budget adjustment, but, which yeah. is finally called a BAA. Which is adjusting of, 16. Yeah, we're adjusting 16. 16. It's sort yeah. of like looking at what did we do, what, you know, you forecast or you budget something that's only going to take X amount of dollars to achieve, and sometimes it takes more, sometimes it takes less. So it's a mid-year correction uh -huh. in, in where things are. So some things are up and down, and um, I think the uh, the the biggest driver right now is two things in budget adjustment is um, the Medicaid, which is a big driver is going to be in the 2017 budget as well. And I think it's important, Betty, for, for people to understand that Medicaid, uh, you, you look at uh, caseload and utilization is up at a number when I look at it, the page makes you want to sit back and have a cup of tea. <laughs> oh, but... But when you take it apart, the, I think that it's important to, that utilization is, 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 is how much an individual is actually using and accessing health care. That actually is down by $20 million across the state. The, the actual utilization of going as a person aggregate, but the caseload, how many people now are a part of the system, is up dramatically. And... Um, what we're hearing in there is you would say, gee, why is that? Um, how has is, how is that come about? There are a couple of factors. Um, in the feds redefined one of the access points, and I know we only have probably a minute left, but there's been, uh, it's called MAGI, and it's allowing people to um, account for their assets in a different way. So maybe if you were a farmer or an independently a uh, carpenter or a business person, self-employed, and if you looked at your assets, you might have trucks and, and barns and a lot of assets that put you above the income rate uh, to access any kind of Medicaid-type services. Well, that change in the federal law has now adjusted so that is doesn't count against you. So, uh -huh. so many more Vermonters who are self-employed, and we want them to have coverage. Oh, yeah. So, so that's where the caseload is up quite a bit, but I think we can be, when you're tracking the, the data below, just below the surface, the uh, utilization is down. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it, Betty, when you let me come on your show. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a lot to talk about and a lot of new stuff on, on how to do budgets, and that's really, really important. And uh, um, It's very exciting, and I think Vermonters, really want to know what are we doing and are we asking the right questions and how are we keeping their tax dollars um, doing what they would want them and, to do. And sometimes they feel that they're not, they, they belong to something but they can't get what they really want. So I hope that they'll take yeah. a look at that site, yeah. spotlight.vermont.gov or spotlightvermont.gov. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, thank you for um, watching and we learned a lot about where our budget and how we're doing our budget. And I think that's very important. Thank you. Bye-bye.